All right, let's have a look at adding some people. So I've got a few reference images of groups of people from more or less the correct angle. So let's just grab some of these. Maybe let's start with this. And let's see about cutting these out. So let's just do it again extremely roughly. And it's a good idea when you cut out these elements to actually save them in a folder, if you have the time, because then the next time you won't have to do it. So I've been saving cutouts of people and whatnot for myself for quite a while now. So usually when I approach these projects, I already have a library of these cut out for myself. Not perfectly, but as well as I need them to be. So let's grab these two. Let's just copy and go in here and let's paste them and let's create a new group and we're going to call this one people okay so let's zoom in a little bit maybe let's cut out a gap in between his legs a little bit more and erase a little bit here okay you can be pretty rough So let's shrink these down. And because these will be such a small feature, they're really just there to add the human scale because people looking at the image will be able to tell that it's humans because we kind of know what humans look like from afar. But you can see this is about as much detail as we're going to get with them. So, you know, let's not try too hard to make them perfect. Maybe let's just filter, sharpen, sharpen. And let's copy these two guys to some other places as well. And then here maybe we can separate them. Put this guy here. Maybe copy him again and put him here. Merge all of that. Copy this guy again. We'll put him here. And let's go cut out some more. Let's have a look at this dude. Let's grab him. And I'm quickly doing this with the polygonal lasso tool. Uh, you might want to use the other lasso. Just the simple one, but I'm more comfortable with the polygonal. So let's just cut this guy out. Copy. Paste him in. Again, we can just adjust the edges with an eraser. You can click E on the keyboard to select the eraser really quickly. And B for brush. Let's again shrink him. Maybe actually let's focus on an area we haven't focused on before. Let's look at livening up this area. So let's take these guys that we have here. And let's just copy all of them over here. Let's see, let's move these two here, these two will place there, maybe shrink them a little bit and flip them to make them slightly different. Maybe actually we want them near the boats, you know, maybe they're interacting with the boats or something, so that makes sense to have people there. These guys, let's maybe put by the temple. Shrink him even a bit more. Okay. Merge that. Let's get our new guy. Maybe let's go to image adjustments and curves and adjust him just slightly. Okay. That'll do. Then we'll put him here on the steps maybe. I guess that's a little bit too big. About that size. Let's just put him here and let's uh, actually sharpen him as well. Okay, and we can put him again here with this group. Just maybe flip him, make him a bit smaller. Now they can both be by the boats. 
maybe something is going on, a conversation or something like that. Here, let's grab maybe this guy sitting by himself. Just cut him out. Okay, copy. Let's paste him and just shrink him down. Flip horizontally. Okay, maybe he's sitting on the stairs. Let's just sharpen. Maybe reduce that. Like some of these pixels are slightly too bright. So let's have him merged. Let's look at a different picture. Here's a whole group of people. Let's grab this guy. He's carrying something. I mean, let's just grab this guy as well. And you want to be selecting in chunks because if you mess up, sometimes you can lose your entire selection that you've just made. So, I want to be slightly careful. Let's grab those guys, this guy, and this lady, and this guy. Let's just select all of these, this guy. Okay. Just the whole bunch of people. All of these. Okay, cool. So let's copy all of them. And let's just paste them here. And let's shrink them to 10%. And now let's have a look at maybe flipping them and have them all maybe walking here. Maybe let's just copy this, shrink this copy, make them a little bit smaller and then filter sharpen sharpen. Okay now there's a group of people outside of this temple, maybe they've been to Pray or something. Let's copy them again. Oops. My computer is being a little bit slow recording this. This Photoshop file is getting quite large now. Let's flip these here. Slightly brighten them. Now they blend in there. Maybe there's something going on. Let's also put them. Um, Over here, maybe. Let's just flip them again. You know, now it looks like this whole group is going up the stairs. They're not, but it's low enough resolution that we can't tell. Okay. Let's have another look. We can grab this bunch of people. See, this is what can happen. You can slightly mess up when making a selection. That's better. Okay, we've selected all of these now. Let's paste them here and let's shrink them down already. So now they're there as well. I feel like these are slightly too red. The hue on these people are slightly too red. So let's just go to curves and select our red channel here and bring it down slightly. And now they blend in slightly better. Let's just use the dodge tool a little bit 
And let's copy these guys over here somewhere as well. Maybe here. And here as well, why not? Okay. We could also take them and place them here. Slightly blend them in. Okay. Let's have another look at our photos. Okay, we've got all of these guys. We've got most of these guys. We can grab maybe this fella. Cut the leg a little bit. And I'm constantly trying to make groups of people because if you look, mostly people don't walk by themselves. And I mean, they do, but here it kind of looks like stock images if you paste people one by one doing everything separately. Whereas if you paste group images, it looks much more realistic. Because if you think of all of those adverts for new buildings and you know, shopping malls that you have and they put in stock photos of people just walking randomly in all directions but not actually interacting. It looks kind of weird, so we try to stay away slightly from that feeling. So, as you can see, the people are very subtle. So let's continue populating the scene. Have I missed anyone? Can maybe grab this guy. Oops. Okay, let's paste them. And let's just put him maybe here. Let's shrink him down slightly. Slightly more. Okay, that's good enough scale. Okay, let's grab a few more of these people. Put them here and let's just change the order of how they're all standing so it doesn't look copied. We can have a few there, some maybe climbing the stairs. Okay. Here again, let's put a couple of these guys here. And if we switch their sides and just darken them, you know, it's hard for a person looking at this image to notice identical copies as long as you kind of keep switching them up slightly, you know, flipping them, rescaling them slightly, maybe changing the color of their shirt occasionally, just little things like that. And so, if we zoom in, now we've got this much difference and this is really just a very 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 tiny way to add life to your image but it is noticeable if you're creating a an image of this scale and this detail people will be looking at it quite closely so you do want to add people because without it it's just going to look dead maybe no one is going to even notice the people specifically but in the back of your mind it makes more sense to see a city populated with people than to see a dead city with no one there so you want to spend maybe a few hours and, and and look for as many different images of people as you can find and then put them into your painting. So let's just grab this guy as well. Maybe all of this. A lady getting into a boat. Here's a guy on shore. Another guy there. 
Let's just grab them all. Okay, copy. Let's paste them in. And then at this distance, it's kind of hard to see what they're doing, so they could be anything really. So let's put them there. Maybe let's just make another copy. Let's place them here. So now this looks like a quite a busy area, whatever is going on with these boats. Okay. So just keep doing this and keep copying and pasting people all across the image and try to think of areas where it would make sense for people to be. So if, you, if you've got a bit of a market area, maybe here somewhere, it makes more sense to have people and then here I have something more of a, I don't know, I guess sacred area where not so many people would be, so less people here. Just kind of try to think of how a normal city would work and there's really not much more to it. You don't have to be very precise. So here I'm going to show you my people that I've created for the original artwork. Alright, so this is my current painting of the people. And let's just zoom in a little bit. And here is my original. So you can see a lot of the same, just more. And if I zoom in, none of these are perfectly cut out. You can see they're very rough cutouts of people. Some of them I could have really spent a lot more time on, but it didn't really matter because I'll, they would get hidden behind haze and just smoke and things like that. And I felt like there was no point in wasting all that extra time. So you can see that while there are a lot of these copy people, they're all made using the exact same quick method that I've just shown you here. So this can take all evening. You know, getting this many people and gathering the photos to get them cut out from. So what I've shown you here is a small chunk, an example, but if you follow this technique and just stay diligent and do a lot of work, you can, over the course of a night or two, fill your artwork with a lot of people. Okay, and that adds a lot of life to your image. In the next video, let's have a look at overpainting the top of these structures here. Currently, they look a little bit bare. I haven't put any effort in, and this is a lot more boring than whatever I have going on down here. This is quite exciting now. But here, it's quite boring, so we can add a little bit more texturing just to flesh this whole scene out a little bit more.